this movie exists. Also, dear Uncle Walt, despite owning Marvel, Star Wars, and two top-notch animation studios, we don't have enough cash to fill the Atlantic Ocean yet, a wish you stated in your will. So we remade the animated Lion King and turned it into a movie posing as live action, even though it's still animated. We are five years away from having the money to create actual animals that act in the lab. And when we do, we will proceed with our remake of Finding Nemo. Also, also, wow, it really is the same movie. Only here, unlike all the other live action remakes, we don't have any human actors on screen whatsoever. So this is a cartoon. This movie is basically Disney saying, we got way better at drawing. Jurassic Africa. Jurafrica? Or Ice Age 6. It, let's do Africa. Is it just me, or is it weirder that all the animals are attending the opening ceremony in this movie? Since these animals look real, it's harder for my brain to process that real animals would ever do this. Ah, Twilight Baby! Oh wait, that's Simba. I'd give back all the sins if he dropped him right here, and the movie was about the trial of Rafiki for Simba slaughter. I'm trying to put my finger on why this new Circle of Life song is so off-putting, and then I realized it's being sung by that Bee Gees impression Jimmy Fallon and Justin Timberlake did on SNL. Well, look who's come down to mingle with the commoners. Aslan? Sarabi and I didn't see you at the presentation of Simba. Look, I can't think of a better voice than James Earl Jones either. If you're gonna make Lion King again, he makes total sense. Hearing someone else would be weird, but hearing anyone other than Jeremy Irons as Scar is weird too, so why not find someone else to play Mufasa? Don't turn your back on me, Scar. Oh no, Mufasa, perhaps you shouldn't turn your back on me. Remember when everyone gave Gus Van Sant unmerciful for making a shot-for-shot -shot remake of Psycho? Yeah, I remember that. Well, as far as brains go, I got the lion's share. The lions make puns about lions? The lions even know puns about lions? And long live the king. What am I gonna do with him? Kill him? Or banish him? I'd kill him. If you killed him, everything would be fine. But because you are still keeping him around, I guess because you're blood relatives, this entire movie will be allowed to happen. How good of a ruler can Mufasa even be if he can't sniff out his biggest threat? We both know he should have been expelled from the Pride Lands long ago. Zazu would be excellent at CinemaSins. <sighs> Coordinated insect art? Also, the first few bugs formed together on their own, and he started grabbing other bugs to help out. So it was mystical at first, but now it seems like he's making the image he wants to see. Dad, 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 dad! Jonathan Taylor Thomas is sitting at home going, I could have done that. <laughs> what a dick. He just walked past a bunch of sleeping lions, and he didn't want to get up either. So now he's forcing everyone to be up? What a dick. Everything the light touches is our kingdom. This seems vague and immeasurable. You rule. All of that? Yes, but nothing behind me or to either side. Only this land in front of us. Everything you see exists together in a delicate balance. As king, you need to understand that balance. And in case there are too many other things existing together, you'll need to snap your fingers so half of it goes away. But Dad, don't we eat the antelope? Yes, Simba. But let me explain. When we die, our bodies become the grass. And the antelope eat the grass. Well, you skipped a few steps, but I get what you mean. This is only true on an atomic level. You have the morning report. Uh, ten flamingos are taking a stand. Uh, two giraffe were caught necking. This morning tonight with John Oliver. Also, this is either a terrible and insignificant morning report, or it's a f***ed up rendition of the 12 Days of Christmas. Watching Simba get enchanted with this totally CGI but realistic looking flying insect, and I suddenly realize these assholes are going to make a new live action Bugs Life next, aren't they? Don't laugh. That's not a joke. They will do this, and you f know it. And you guys better f Flood social media with a timestamp YouTube link to this since video to prove I called it. Go back to your den, Simba. I don't babysit. He is literally just outside his own den. So why is Scar's lair so close to Pride Rock? An elephant graveyard? Whoa. Multiple choice. Elephant graveyard is A. New York's hottest club featuring ivory stripper poles, pachyderm hide bar chairs, and a menu featuring artisan bologna sandwiches. B. The name of my middle school ska band. C. The name of a spicy Albanian cola drink. Or D. The name my college girlfriend gave her sexual era of large boyfriends, which occurred just prior to me. And remember, it's our little secret. Uncles. Oh, how lovely it is to see the future king with his future queen. What do you mean future queen? Do lions really have arranged marriages? Or does Zazu just know by looking at cubs that one day they'll have wild lion sex? We are never getting married, Zazu. We are never, ever, ever getting hitched together. We are never, ever, ever out of service, out of Africa. Out of Africa. They are so f casual, man. Every single person they know has warned against going here, and yeah, that might pique one's interest, but no hesitation, no fear. Can you just give me a little bit of space? I'm helping. 
We have talked about this before. No, you haven't. That's what comic relief villains always say in the effort to inject humor into a kid's movie. Anyway, let me guess, because you guys look so real and you didn't want to be scary to the kiddos, so you made them riff and joke and how close am I? The hyenas stop the attack to argue about the plan and who is supposed to be where. Which reminds me of that scene in Django Unchained, where Quentin inserts himself into the film for a super unfunny scene that ultimately distracts from the main narrative. How in the ever-loving f did Zazu find them? Why would he even bother checking that place where the lion cubs are warned by everyone else not to ever go? Thankfully, there is a lion cub size only tunnel nearby that these lion cubs are able to find immediately. What are they waiting for? <laughs> We're all shaming. <laughs> Even Mufasa would be overwhelmed and killed by 35 hyenas, man. How can you go so hard at making him a supernatural badass here, but then in a few minutes suggest to me that he dies in a stampede of animals he regularly eats? You deliberately disobeyed me. I know. You could have been killed. And what's worse, you put Nala in danger. Let's talk about this shot for this conversation. It's a pretty shot, and we can see that Mufasa towers over Simba, showing the contrast between the two. But it feels like something is lost when we don't see Mufasa's face during the scolding. This is a different choice from the original, and I'm wondering why it was made. It may not even be a sin, but I'm counting it as one. Do you understand what's at stake? Um, no. I'm just a tiny baby cub. I don't understand stakes and world politics and Look at the stars. Look how they shine for you. Well, you're in luck. He's right behind you. I'm sure this hyena has far better eyesight than I do in this dark and in the fog, but it's not like we can see any f***ing line until two or three seconds after he says this. What could you possibly offer us? Jeez, the dialogue, the setting, the hyenas, the sensitive, burned-out, would-be king. Why does it feel like I'm eavesdropping on a meeting at Trump Tower? Be This song is less menacing and a lot more shouty than the original. Lots more shouty. Why even do a different version? There's no f***ing way Simba would be able to stay this far in front of the stampede for this long. Simba's down there! Simba? I'll find him! Got a question. When Simba goes to play with Uncle Scar, is Scar considered the chief babysitter at that point? Even though Mufasa knows he's an evil dick? Is that why Zazu wasn't watching him? Seems like Zazu would always be near whenever Simba visits his uncle. Come to me, son! Jump! <laughs> Jump! I know lions can use their jaws to grab cubs by the neck and shit, but can they do it in mid-air? And from this angle, seems like jumping is more dangerous than just hanging onto the tree. Also, this whole scene calls into question the Circle of Life opening, where animals consciously come to Pride Rock to anoint the new future king and acknowledge the lion's authority as their ruler. Because why can't Mufasa just roar and tell these asshole wildebeest to chill the f out? Yeah, it might be a Blues Brothers cop car situation, but they'd get over it. Scar! How did Scar get his name? He's clearly got a massive scar over one of his eyes, but he didn't come out of the womb with that scar. So did they name him something normal and then after he got the scar, Scar became a nickname? Wouldn't he get pissed if people were always calling him a derogatory nickname based on his appearance? Or did the monkey see the future and knew there would be a real Scar later, so they named Scar Scar at the birth because of the future Scar? Scar. Long live the king! Scar's entire plan hinges on Simba not being able to see this. And remember, he told Zazu to find the pride and bring them here to help, which is a stark contrast to the original where he merely slapped Zazu into a rock and knocked him unconscious. So now he's gotta hope nobody sees this. No. Simba, what have you done? Where the f*** is the pride that Zazu flew off to get? You get the pride! There is no way that they're that far away from the ravine, and they totally forget about this for the rest of the movie. I was gonna do a Simba survives this thing, but that wouldn't do it justice. This cat miracles himself to safety. These two hyenas were told by Boss Hyena to go down and make sure Simba was dead. They don't. This is like when Scar told all the hyenas to go kill Simba, and they agreed, but didn't finish the mission. This movie wants us to believe good only conquers because evil is too lazy or inept to organize or gain fallen line followers, and I'm alive right now in 2019 and the world is on fire because evil can organize and fall in line, goddammit. Wow, it's like this cliff was made especially for lion cubs to survive falls, wasn't it? Other names besides Pride Rock that were considered for this formation include Dick and Ball Rock, Permanently Down Seesaw Rock, It Clearly Fell, So How Did It Fall on That Round Rock Without Breaking at the Center Rock, and Leonard. To lose a brother, such a deep personal loss. None of these lions believe this bull though, right? They see through this, right? Because Scar's a known evil, and Simba's too young to be responsible for a death, right? Scar is skinny and bony and weak, and you could take him! And little Simba, who had barely begun to live. So, did they go and check to see if Simba's body was anywhere? What did they do with Mufasa? Do they have burials, or do they just have to leave him down in the ravine to get picked apart by wild animals? And Zazu, he just accepted that Simba was dead and didn't look for him? <laughs> Ooh. 
Yeah, we're worried on that one, dip. Does he have to walk on the very tippy top of the pointy sand dune? Is he trying to stay as close to the scorching sun as possible? Hakuna X Matata. He's gonna eat you and then use my body as a toothpick. These two are the only good thing about this movie. They're not good enough to earn a sin removal, so they end up earning an added sin by making the rest of the movie's shameful laziness so obvious. Repeat after me, kid. Hakuna Matata. <sighs> Is this better? Is it different enough to warrant its existence? Do you not feel the same feels by just watching the original? Oh. Do zebras even care about warthog farts? Are zebras like people? An antelope? Uh-oh. So wait, does this antelope have some sort of character that the other antelope Simba's eaten didn't have? When he used to go on hunts with his dad, did the antelope scream, God, please don't kill me, and make a reference to Billy Ocean or some before they die? This is going a long way to proving Jules Winfield's philosophy about not eating dogs because they have personality. Personality goes a long way. Ooh, a little cream filled kind. Why are the insects any different from the mammals in this world? Since all these species can speak to each other, why don't the bugs have any way of communicating? It's kind of convenient for their no murdering policy, isn't it? Sasu, where have you been? I'm sorry, Nala. I came as soon as I could. What exactly has Zazu been doing where he's had to be away for a long time? Did he go do research on the One Ring? You're overhunting, Scar. I've simply perfected the kill with the help of my army. That's not really answering the accusation. Overhunting implies food supply concerns, whereas your perfected kill suggests that the prey will be limitless or that, at a minimum, you don't care. I mean, not to turn out a real lion, but, you know, the kind that eats... I'm gonna go. He is never gonna want a frolic with a carnivore. Yeah, but in this world, you have the ability to communicate to each other and learn from each other's actions. This is where the movie wants to have it both ways. It's either a jungle out there or it's a civilized society. The antelope is acquainted with Simba enough to know he's not going to eat it because he's been here for however long it's been and he hasn't eaten any animals. This is just like that bullshit from Racing Stripes when the Frankie Munez zebra was afraid of getting into the starting gate for some stupid reason, even though he was fully conscious of his actions. All I'm saying is racing stripes. We're entrusting you to make a plan for us today. This is important. Think about all you've been taught. Even the new scenes in this remake feel stale and regurgitated, like there was a reason the original film didn't contain them. Man, this piece of Simba's mane travels a forced, gumpy en route that is so insane the odds of it reaching Rafiki and that he would recognize it are astronomical to an insulting degree. And besides, is this movie saying there are no other lions this mane hair could be from? Seriously, are the lions in the Pride Lands the only ones within a butterfly effect radius? Also, oh my god, it's a bug rolling a circular giraffe turd with a tuft of lion hair in it. <laughs> How does did this even pass through the first draft of the script? Even DreamWorks, king of poop jokes in animated movies, has never stooped quite this low. That is a bug pushing poo. Poo! Holy fucking sh they did make a live action bug's life. They just put it in the middle of this live action Lion King movie. Oh. My. God. Damn, there's more bug eating in this movie than, I don't know, 12 monkeys? This Nala chases Pumbaa scene goes on for some time. There must be more lions out there if Nala isn't immediately yelling, Simba! I'm doubling down on Rafiki knowing that that was his tuft of mane earlier. Lady, you've got your lions crossed. More lion puns? And does Timon know about telephone lines of old? Where sometimes the lines would get crossed and you'd get connected to the wrong number on accident? After Timon opens the song, Nala and Simba suddenly begin to sing, Can You Feel the Love Tonight? Which is weird because Timon literally just sang that Nala and Simba had no clue they were falling in love. Also, forcing Donald Glover to do Wet with Beyonce is super unfair. He's a fine singer, but more of a rapper. And Beyonce is freaking Beyonce. This is like asking Jeremy Renner to do Wet with Adele. No one will be seated during the Simba and Nala act out a scene from Attack of the Clones part of the movie. Harmony with Lion porn. Also, I don't know what kind of love potion number nine is in Lion Pheromones, but these two are in love after one day. You'd think all the horrible Scar stuff back at the Pride Lands would dull Nala's horny, but it hasn't. I'd remove all the sins and retire if Simba mounted Nala and this turned into a clinical nature film. Would that even make this movie R-rated? All it would be is just CGI lions doing it. Correction, I know your father. He died a long time ago. He's alive. Rafiki gets Simba's hopes up that he'll see his father in the flesh, but it'll merely be the ghost of his father. Rafiki is like Obi-Wan, talking about Luke's father, just switch dead for a lie. And both happen to be voiced by James Earl Jones. Do you know how much right moonlight you would need to see a clear reflection of your own face in nighttime water? Cause it's a lot. Simba. I do have to admit that this is way better than the live action remake of Kimba the White Lion. Don't leave me again. I never left you. I never will. Except now, I'm technically leaving you now, but try back in about 30 minutes. You sometimes need to unplug SpiritNet for a while and plug it back in so it can reboot. I am Simba, son of Mufasa. 
Well, that was easy. Also, at this point, an hour and 28 minutes in and with a full half hour left of this movie, and just FYI, the original one had ended by now. This new song that I'm not gonna play for you goes, Spirit, watch the heavens open. Oh, Spirit. And that is just a bunch of nothing. Spirit, watch the heavens open. What is this song talking about? Ufasa in the cloud? That was last night. This song is present tense. Is Simba returning home somehow like the heavens opening? This song would be equally impactful if she were singing, Nelson, watch the green bit puppets. Oh, Nelson! I didn't want to believe you. Yes, Scar's reign has made it where all the animals have run away and the grass and trees don't grow anymore and everything looks like I'm wondering though, how do you recruit animals back to the Pride Lands after this? How do you say, come back! We'll only eat you half as much as Scar did! Your dinner! I know the hyenas are dumb, but this should be very high on the this is a distraction scale. Nobody willingly draws attention to themselves to be dinner for any other purpose, right? Especially when Timon says, <laughs> Out loud. Well, okay, Pumba distracted like five hyenas, but we saw earlier there were dozens of them here working with Scar. So what about the rest of them? All you have to do is be my queen. Jesus, we saw him ask her to be his queen ages ago in this movie. And that was before Nala found Simba. So does Scar call for Sarabi every day, patiently ask her to be his queen, then send her to bed without supper when she refuses and just start all over the next day? My point is that while we were watching all that Simba-Nala reunion storyline, this storyline stood stone still and didn't advance at all for weeks on end. The choice is yours, Scar. Step down or fight. I'm pretty sure we brought this up in the last movie, but Simba's been playing with bugs all this time since he was a kid. Why is he supposed to be a good fighter now? Because he's big? <laughs> yep, good thinking. We'll need that fire to light the battle scene. Thanks, Jesus. You told us you didn't get to the gorge in time. That's true. Then how did you see the look in Mufasa's eyes? Wait, you heard him say that? I understand you're not hearing him actually admit to killing Mufasa, but how did you hear him say he saw the look in Mufasa's eye? He was talking at a normal volume a good distance away. Lions, attack! They had to wait for a command to join the fight? I see Disney is now employing MCU fight editing across all their properties. Plump and chubby. Chubby? Pumbaa suddenly gets the power to fight just because someone calls him names. This is that sports fallacy that motivation is the deciding factor in a contest. Like Watford would totally beat Liverpool in football if the Liverpool players said something mean to them before the game. Oh yeah, that Nala versus Shenzi battle. They <laughs> have that long festering hate that this movie has totally shown us. Guys, you made an animated movie. There are no stunt doubles to mask. There are no prima donna actors who don't know fighting moves. Why all the damn cuts? It's already dark and the only light is provided by fire. Whenever you're running from someone that wants to kill you, the best choice is always to climb to the top of the tallest nearby thing you can find because that offers multiple escape routes that all equal death. Those revolting scavengers made me do it. I was planning on killing them all. And they just happen to follow you up the mountain to hear this for some reason. Oh, majesty. I'm wondering, how did fiery ember get all the way up here. They're way the f up on Pride Rock. I'm not even sure why this fire is so huge either, since all that could burn was a bunch of small dead trees on the ground 100 feet down. Even if embers did get up here, they'd die out, wouldn't they? I'm no fire expert, but this seems like wishful thinking on the screenplay's part. The hero doesn't plan to kill the villain, but the villain insists on fighting and ends up still dying so the viewers can see justice served without the movie having to dirty the hero's hands cliche. Wait, he's still alive? And he can still walk after that fall? Okay, so it's pouring rain, then part of the clouds part so Simba can see the stars, then we cut to Simba roaring, and this is not a nighttime shot. You can't have stars behind the rain clouds, but then have the rain clouds this bright. I'd like to know how much time this represents. The Pride Lands back to form, all the animals are back, and Simba and Nala have just had a child. Considering how thirsty they were for each other, I'm guessing she got pregnant right away, which means this represents roughly four months. Maybe they had responsible family planning. Maybe Simba pulled out a few times while the Pride Lands got back up to speed and this took a year or two, but this really does feel like the change back to the good days was instant. I know how sometimes to make a copy of a copy, it's not quite as sharp as, well, the original. Meet Flower. She's the leader of a 29-strong family of meerkats. All of this will belong to me? All your base, your base, base, base. All your base are belong to us. Hey! 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 This hey. is our spot! Come on, get out of here! I need some personal space. Three. Stay out of my personal space. Four. Keep away from my personal space. Five, get out of that personal space. Six, stay away from my personal space. Thanks to the quick action of Commander Lewis, astronauts Beck, Johansson, Martinez, and Vogel were all able to reach the Mars ascent vehicle 
and perform an emergency launch at 728 Central Time. You, Gelfling, like me? Well, yes. But I thought I was the only one. I thought I was. Goodbye, Mama. Now you can have ice cream in heaven. <laughs>